Welcome back everybody. I thought for this video, I go ahead and make a rocket stove hot water heater for off grid. Okay guys, today's about to be a lot of fun. I'm about to take y'all back to junior high school, arts and crafts class. We're about to mix this up. Let me show you what we're doing here. One might ask, Sax, how are you gonna make a hot water tank without any gas or any electricity? Easy, let me show you. Here's what we need. Four inch PVC, two inch PVC, a water jug, copper coil, cooking oil, clay, silicone, an eight inch cardboard form, some wire mesh, a bag of quick creep mortar, and your dog. Hey girl. Step number one, put us a two inch hole in the bottom here for that two inch PVC to go into. This particular four inch PVC pipe I'm using is two feet tall. I came up three inches from the base and put a mark. Using a C clamp, I secured this to the table. I'm getting ready to put a hole at the top of that three inch mark. I'll be using a two inch dozer or a hole saw to put the hole in the end of that PVC. I line up my hole saw where my blade is at the top of that uh, three inch mark on that PVC and we'll drill this out. After we get the first two inch uh, hole dozered out, come up two inches and put another mark and we'll put a second hole right there. All right guys, so the next thing we're gonna do here, now that we've got our two two inch holes uh, cut out of there, we're gonna take our two inch PVC. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up with the top hole in an angle. I'm gonna put us a couple marks at the bottom of that hole where we can put some cuts, angle cuts in there so this can set in there right in an angle and we'll cut this down. Let's do that. So now we've got the notch cut out in an angle. This is able to go inside of that top hole and then be pulled up to give us that angle. Next I measured out eight inches from the end of that uh, where we put the notch in it and I'm going to cut that off. All right guys, so now we got our eight inch long uh, two inch PVC cut. Uh, we got the notches in it so it can go in this top hole here and not just to allow it to be able to move up because we want this to be able to angle up. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put us a hole in the end of this and we're gonna drill us a hole the top of this so that we can put a string on there to hold this up in that angle. All right, you with me, you with me? All right, let's move on. So sweet y'all. All right, let's go on to the next part. Now we're gonna go ahead and take this eight inch long, notch cut out at the end, two inch PVC, put in this top of this two inch hole we put, stick that right on in there like so. We want that angled up, so we got a hole drilled out here, hole drilled out at the top of this to hold that shape, and we're gonna tie this paracord on there just to hold it up. Let's do that. So this is what we look like so far. Everybody still with me? Got our four inch PVC pipe, got the two two inch holes dozered out. We got the eight inch two, uh, eight inch long PVC cut out, that's two inches. We put the notch in it so we can get it in there. The reason for the notch is so that we can make that setting an angle up. We've got the paracord, a couple holes drilled out. We got the paracord tied on there to hold that in that angle. All right, so if everybody's with me, let's continue this build. Okay, here we go. Moving on to the next part. All right, now what we need to do, we need to take this copper coil and we need to coil it around this cylinder because we want to incorporate this copper coil inside the liner of that clay. Because remember, we're not just making a rocket stove, we're making a rocket stove hot water heater. Yeah. All right, so where we are here, I took 
the string off of this, pull this off to get out of the way for the moment. We're going to take this copper coil and we're going to coil it around our cylinder here, starting above where that ignition port, well actually, I guess this would be the ignition port, where the feeder port is going to be. We're going to start coiling this around because we want that copper coil to be lined inside of that clay, wrapping around all the way up. So as the heat makes it suck in water from the water container through that coil, it goes round and round and round the whole time getting hotter and hotter and hotter as that rocket stove was burning in the middle of it before it comes out the top back into the water container, which will keep recycling that. Got it? Yeah, I knew y'all were smart. So you guys, is it all starting to make sense to you? I knew it would. Highly intelligent audience. So now we need to mark and cut this form at 21 inches. So we can leave three inches at the top so we can pull that PVC out of it whenever it's formed. After we've got our coil wrapped around our four inch PVC pipe, we've got the two two inch holes cut out got this two inch PVC pipe that's braced in there with a with a <clears throat> paracord to hold that angle and the entire thing is, is covered in cooking oil or any kind of grease whatever to keep uh, concrete or the clay from adhering to it um, we're gonna put another two inch piece of PVC pipe sticking out of that and then we'll cut two holes out of the bottom of this form the same two inch holes to line up with these two so that we can put that form around this and then uh, get ready to fill it with concrete. So the second hole, the top hole on our form is going to be sized up to uh, the next size. That way, whenever we're pouring the concrete, it's got form around this to create the tube that's going to go down into this rocket stove. After that's taken care of, we need to line up where the copper is going to come out of the tube. So I'm going to line the form up and put some marks on the tube. But the marks need to go on the other side because when this form goes on, the holes will need to be on um, the left side of this. So let's go ahead and do that. Set that there. Bam. We'll put a mark. Now we've got those two holes drilled out for that copper coil to go through. Let's move on to the next step. After getting all the holes put in the form, we cut it straight down the center of this form so that we can open it up in order for this to be able to go around the cast. All right, so now it's time to once again pull all this apart and I'll show you why. For obvious reasons, this PVC can't be a permanent part of this build. For obvious reasons, I mean, unless you just really want to sit around inhaling burning plastic, wouldn't recommend it. So, this brings me to the cliffhanger, leaving you wonder, why in the world would I need some cooking oil? Let me show you. I've decided I'm going to use Crisco rather than uh, the regular vegetable oil. I think that'll coat this too better to make it release from that cement. So after greasing the cylinder, putting the copper coil back around it, putting the two inch PVCs in the two, uh, two inch holes that are cut out of the four inch PVC, we use that clay to fill in the gaps all the way around it. That way whenever we pour, uh, when we put this in the mold and we pour the concrete around it, the concrete won't go inside of that. In order to add tissel strength, we're going to use this wire mesh here um, that we picked up at uh, Home Depot and we're going to cut this mesh and we're going to put it around that cylinder. We're not going to put it around the copper, we don't need to because that will act as uh, basically rebar itself and reinforce it inside of that but we're going to wrap this mesh around everything else. Let's do that. We're going to use these basic tin snips. We've cut the wire 
that uh, held that together in the packaging. Cut that off and we'll use this wire um, to, to support it as we go around that cylinder. As we've got the cast wrapped up in wire, we're going to get ready to put this in the mold and then pour the mortar in it. All right, so now we've got this mold filled up with concrete. We're going to let that harden and pull all the tubes out and do a little bit more shaping on that feeder tube. After that form sets, we need to go ahead and get that PVC out of it. I'm gonna show you how I'll do it. I'm just gonna use a hammer and a piece of steel to hammer that form out of the inside of that, that PVC out of the inside of that form. All right, now we got that PVC out of there. We're going to take some clay and just kind of smoothen up some of the spots from this form. Now that we got some clay put on there, just kind of clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and burn. That way we can make that clay dry faster rather than just sitting there so I can get on to my next part of this build. Originally, I was going to use a water jug for the water uh, canister on this, but after reevaluating that plan, that seems like a bad idea. That copper might get too hot. Let's not do that. Instead, I'm going to use one of these ammo cartridges. It's metal, so I ain't got to worry about that copper getting hot and melting holes in it. And this here will still hold about five gallons of water, so we'll test out that theory. So what I need to do here first is drill out a hole here. Drill out a hole here for that copper tubing to go inside and after we get that copper tubing in then we'll run the silicone around that to make it a uh, waterproof watertight. After I get that copper tubing in I'll drill a hole in here and we'll use a step bit. And I'll step that out enough to thread this uh, spout in and then we'll use silicone around that as well. Now we drill the two holes out for that copper to go into. Now I'll drill out the hole for that spout. Now that we've got this uh, hole drilled out, we're going to start threading this down there, but we're going to put some silicone around the base of this first for the spout, and then we're going to screw that down tight. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we've got that spout screwed down in there and silicone. We'll let that dry. Okay, so now we've got the copper ran inside of the water container, and we've got silicone around that to make that water tight. That's what it looks like inside of it. I have the copper lines coming in, the water will fill that up, and the bottom tube will pull, and the top tube will push as that water recycles. And it might take just a little bit uh, for that to warm up whenever I put it in there, because it is like 23, 24 degrees out here in the great old state of Kansas. So let's see what's up. All right, so we're gonna take some sticks that we gathered up around the yard. We're gonna get this old thing started up and then feed it with some more fuel.
I don't think my little barbecue grill thermostat is working because that's just over a hundred degrees on that but this water is already boiling inside so I imagine it's much hotter than a, a hundred and some degrees so I don't think I don't think this is working but there you go your little rocket stove with your copper coil in it going into your water tank and then run your water out of that to whatever for more off-grid ideas click on the links in my description below to show you how to make a gasifier a mini wood chipper convert a push mower into a generator a recurve bow biochar or even a windmill Thanks for watching.